Welcome back to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Karen Greer. My guest, clinical psychologist, Dr. Sherry Blake, and we are talking about the juvenile justice system and the teens in it, some of the children in the system. And we tend to prejudge or characterize, you know, a teen that comes from a broken home or a bad neighborhood as a bad kid. Is that always the case? Not always the case. We have kids from low income uh, homes. We have kids that have had horrible backgrounds. They don't kill. Sometimes we have to understand that, that your circumstances do not have to determine what's going to happen to you in the future. And a lot of times we assume that's the reason, and it's not the reason. There are a lot of things that play a role. Sometimes we have um, developmental issues. Sometimes we have mental issues. One of the things that's very important for the public to know, everybody that kills do not necessarily re reach the diagnosis of being mentally ill. Because we assume that when something happens, oh, they were mentally ill. They may have some mental challenges, but it's not necessarily those that are mentally ill because they are the ones that typically do not kill. They are the victims. We're seeing some teens uh, killing strangers, Absolutely. some killing family members. Where, where is the difference there? Well, we know that 75% of kids that, or teens that kill know the victim. Usually they're family members, usually they're friends or acquaintances. So we know it's not an unfamiliar. Sometimes when you see a stranger being killed by a teen, it's usually game related. It's a challenge. It's something in terms of the associations of who that child is with that, that prom uh, provokes that. It's not something in isolation. Something we're noticing in young kids as well is torturing animals, dogs oh or cats. God. Is that yes. something once you've noticed that in a kid, you need to really watch Absolutely, that child? Absolutely, because once we see them torture young kids, torture animals, what it says to us is that they're not developing to have a conscience, to have a sense of empathy. They are able to do stuff, harm people, and never blink an eye. That is dangerous. Oh, uh, well, and we, we're seeing a lot of that. We've talked about some of the intervention programs. Yeah. Do you think those are working? Are they catching the children at the right times to keep them from staying in the system? I think that it's helpful, but I think we have to do more. I think mm -hmm. that it's very important to understand that child is not out there in isolation. That child has a family or has a history. So when we're talking about treating the child, you have to treat the family. You cannot just treat the child without treating the caretaker or the person that child is with. Because otherwise what happens is you may do some good, but that child returns to an environment where people may have shared or have had certain behaviors that promoted that child's behaviors. What are you seeing in your practice? What kinds of kids are Oh my you God, with? I have a variety. I'm very fortunate to have a variety and I, and I stay busy because I always want to have my, my hand on the pulse of the community. I have kids right now, and a couple that I'm really concerned about, but the reality is they do not meet the criteria for long-term treatment. They haven't technically been in the juvenile justice center, but one of the things that I know for a fact, one kid, he's been bullied, he's isol he isolated, there's no social system, there are no friends, he doesn't talk. So what does that say? All of those old markers, he has no sense of consciousness and he'll do things, but he'll deny them, but he's not gonna talk about them. His father is not in the home and although all single parent homes are not necessarily bad, but it means that there is no role model for him to even identify because he lives unfortunately with mostly women. So there's a lot of anger, and we cannot underestimate the anger that these kids hold, and then they lash out. 30 seconds, what is a sign, something parents can look at at home that they First need to get help? First of all, they need to look at depression. When a, kids that hurt have been hurt, you know, hurt people hurt. So we have to understand a lot of that uh, aggression that they have hourly is really aggression inwardly. So we need to look at the warning signs of depression. Also, we know that kids that kill have had a history of suicide attempts. So we need to really look at those telltale signs. Parents, you know, it is it's hard, but they're there. Dr. Sherry Blake, you're awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much Thank for your you time for me. and some good points there. Thank you for joining us as well for this edition of Public Affairs on Peach. We'd love for you to join in on the conversation. Or if you have a topic you'd like to see us cover, let us know. Send us an email, publicaffairs at cbs46.com. Thank you.